Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all on behalf of Miss Kuru and also congratulate Miku for arranging this Surekhan conference at Pune. A lot of transition happening at all levels, central level and state level. And I welcome our chief guest, Mr. Anupushnale, RD, MSG Sen, and also ADG, Meda, Mr. Pankaj, Dr. Balivar, and all of my panelists we have here. It's a uh, classic uh, example of uh, panel. We have all the stakeholders available on the panel. So almost all the questions we expect to be answered here. And uh, thank you for setting in tone, uh, uh, Mr. Nare, because it was uh, rightly put by you. Uh, what are the things happening in uh, Maharashtra? So, in that one, at central level, you know, this time uh, the budget has mentioned special about the green, the green growth. As one of the priority mentioned uh, by uh, the government of India, and the uh, focus on uh, green is uh, very much there at all levels. For energy transition, they have put uh, more than 35,000 crores allotted for energy transition. And uh, we have a lot of schemes happening, uh, whether it's the biogas and the governance schemes or I integration. At the same time, we have RDSS scheme also, the reactor of uh, distribution sector, uh, where more than 3 lakh crores are allotted for. Improvement in the uh, distribution sector. So uh, many things happening. COP26 we have uh, mentioned 500 gigawatt by 2030. So many government says 450 gigawatt, but government of India has put a target of 500 gigawatt by 2030. As mentioned, COP26 was informed to the entire world. So let us keep in our mind 500 gigawatt, not 450. Uh, but uh, thinking in that direction, should not fall short of 50 gigawatt at the end of 2030. So on that note, uh, uh, as uh, informed by uh, Mr. Nare, uh, Maharashtra is lagging uh, than other state, as I mentioned by him. So I would like to know uh, views from MSCDC and followed by Meda. What are the reasons uh, why Maharashtra is lagging uh, in development compared to other states? Is there anything which MSCDC uh, is lagging or want to uh, start working on that direction? And how can the developers be uh, given a confidence that uh, we can compete with other states? Sir. Basically, right from beginning, you might be knowing whatever the uh, regulatory decides the policy. And earlier, uh, in the 2008, 7, 8, and all uh, when this open access was there, uh, all the solar energy was coming in the market. To be frankly speaking, we were in the reserve. Reserve mind. These competitors are going to come now, what to do, and this uh, whatever this policy regarding the root of solar was not very clear. Regulatory as also not clear. It was not clear by the regulatory. And after that, we will uh, after that uh, we have seen that in other states the regulatory was very much open and this utility was very much open regarding the rooftop and they realized the uh, realized match of this uh, Resources are available, solar resources are available for public power generation. And uh, that, was, that was the main reason um, we were lagging. Uh, we were lagging the other year. But after that, when we realized there is no other alternative than this uh, uh, for the solar, then uh, our policy changed and our government has taken a new. And the utility also, uh, we are also come forward for this uh, solar power. Uh, so, even the stringent uh, uh, RPOs for this emission is served. So, because of that, we are now progressing in that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's a little note for our developers to, uh, it's a nice thing for developers to hear that MSCDCL has uh, honestly accepted that there are some like earlier. But now, MSCDCL is uh, changing the color from uh, so black to brown, brown to green. We hope to take it forward. I would like also here to from uh, developers on the side of the table. But we would like to have uh, views from MEDA. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Pankaj 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 Pankajwar. He, uh, luckily, he, he also has background from MSC this year and also from MEDA. So he has seen uh, uh, both the sides of uh, uh, the, uh, the other side of the table and uh, this development on the, uh, this side. So we would like to hear from you, sir, uh, what MEDA is uh, taking step for uh, giving comfort to the developer and uh, we can cooperate with the other uh, states. Good morning to all. Uh, 
as uh, rightly pointed out by in the director Narayan sir, Maharashtra is a bit lagging in terms of uh, eye targets. When we declared our eye policy on 31st December 2020, then the target was 25 gigawatt. Against it, we are just uh, 14.4 gigawatt as of now. So we really want to understand. We really want to facilitate developers. First of all, I will just jot down the what is declaring policy. Policy asks for a single window clearance system for concept uh, to commissioning of eye projects. So, Meda has already developed a single window portal and that has been running successfully. Uh, some registrations have been done through portal and now grid connectivity and other steps are being taken. Timeline has been defined for every stakeholder. <laughs> there are stakeholders like Meda, Discom, Transco, Electrical Inspector. So, whenever the I most to every stakeholder. The timeline has been defined and the tracking has been done on the portal. So I think it, it will facilitate developers regarding single window clear system. Policy is applicable to reporting and handmade projects. Then exemption of electricity, all of us know, 14 years. Deemed non agricultural status for land that is there. We are in process of filing petition to do for RPO of this form, 50% of RPO shall be made out in Maharashtra itself. Because when we see the uh, renewable power of application of this form in Maharashtra, then we see that against my target of 19.5, 17.5 is being achieved. So it is almost more than 80%. But against 25 gigabyte, we are at 11.4, it is less than 50%. So, Renewable power application of discounts in Maharashtra is being met out to developers in other states. And high capacity in Maharashtra is not going down. So, for that, as I said, we develop single window portal. Again, we are identifying lands. Discom is also doing the same business. They are identifying lands. We will return to all collectors who are identifying government land. In vicinity of subdivision, 5 to 10 km radius of subdivision, we are identifying private lines also that will facilitate developers. But still, we know that this is not enough. And we are, we are again in process of conversation with developers to know what are their problems and why are projects not coming in Maharashtra at that pace. Already, we know that Kusum is in process, Kosum A, B, C. So in Kosum A and C, Discom is having tendering and good response is that Kosum B, Concrete Solar, being implemented by Maya and we have installed 54,000 pumps in there and we will complete 1 lakh pumps in this year. To identify the potential, again we are bringing clean hydrogen policy. So, for clean hydrogen requirement of REP come up and we we'll come up with some incentives for clean hydrogen developers, RE developers for clean hydrogen. So, that will be again next vertical which will facilitate RE development in Maharashtra. So, these are the initiatives taken by the META and again I would like to know from you people what other things you expect from us and we will definitely try to incorporate them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, that was the uh, little thing we have brought up about the uh, 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 honest uh, reply for both every incident made up and uh, uh, the eager recently showed that uh, they are also want to be part of renewable energy green growth in uh, Maharashtra. So before going to the private developers uh, on the utility step project, uh, one point I since you mentioned about green hydrogen, there was a policy for uh, green energy open access by central government. It has announced on 6th of June 2022. But unfortunately, Maharashtra I think has moved in that direction. So I would like to know from Mr. Nari, is there any uh, reservation from MSCTCL and uh, 
what the institution want to uh, put that in Maharashtra uh, for giving the open access, allowing 100 kilowatt and above one day demand consumers to avail uh, green energy open access. So basically, our free uh, open access uh, requirement is about megawatt and hour. So, we will require to uh, then move on to the regulatory and uh, giving the allowing to you people, not only the green energy, regular energy also, but uh, the open access to the uh, government. If the demand is there like that, you, uh, they will come definitely will require to move on that and uh, basically uh, if you are very eager to for the activity and have their demand then various vendors uh, can demand for that and we can go to the difficulty and they will take the allowance. Definitely we, we have to uh, operate in the frame of the regulatory commission. So if they allow us we will definitely go for the Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Dr. Yon, sir, uh, green hydrogen you mentioned, uh, there is one more uh, mention about the green corridor, the national railway across India for having the I, uh, ISTS connected uh, uh, solar power and wind power. So, uh, on that line, and also about this green energy open access, would like to comment on? Green energy open access, I said, also already commented. We hope that. As early as possible. And, uh, yeah, there is a push from it. <laughs> there is a definite push from it. And uh, we'll uh, really try for it to happen as early as possible so that it leads to our development in Maharashtra. And Green Energy Corridor is already in process at Medai facility and Medai also funding for land. Thank you, sir. Uh, let us move to the uh, other side of the table now for the developers. We have uh, uh, many developers. We have BUT, we have uh, Tata Power, we have Renew, we have Spring Energy, and Clean uh, Tech Solar. Yeah. So, uh, for the utility scale, scale project, this uh, session is called utility scale project. So, uh, opportunities, I think there are many. Uh, MSC Digital and Meda would like to support that. As by uh, both these uh, uh, officers. So I would like to know from uh, Mr. Dingra, uh, if you want to comment on the, the trends and challenges and opportunities on utility scale projects. Good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, probably you must be knowing the name of BBG while in Maharashtra, uh, not more so, but uh, other facility management and medical services we are getting into. As far as the solar is concerned, for the past five years we picked up. Uh, Substantially, we have commissioned more than 600 megawatt of utility scale projects. Now, the next thing that we are targeting is the manufacturing of uh, modules that we are doing up in the in northern India. And we are the first ones to import uh, machinery from Spain rather than from China to manufacture the high class modules. So, there are a lot of challenges which do have come across in the targets that the government has made today and uh, which I think I'll be seconded by many other people from Dhaka, Spain, we from Renew as well. That uh, we on the, you know, the ground level, we face a lot of challenges. Targets are very much uh, set in by the government, but uh, uh, problems are also too many, which we have to really come across and make it a reality today. So, coming back to our basic problems today, now the target set by the government is around 500 gigawatts by say 2030. But now all the more, the influx of the cost, mainly on the solar model, which has gone up substantially before everybody agrees, the tariff is certainly going up. And the uh, government which now has been telling to you know, implement on the DCR side of the modules today. But today if you really see, if you really go by the DCR content that we have, that is the domestic content of the modules. The cell manufacturing is yet to pick up in a big way. Module manufacturing is picking up. There are also you know, people are, uh, have applied in the PLI scheme and there are also special uh, numbers to them. But yet to be implemented, and uh, uh, if we are, we are ready to come across 500 gigawatt, what is the manufacturing base today we have in India? Uh, actually, if you see the numbers, it is still very low. Going by the facts and figures, uh, if you say what we have still. 
to go more, more than uh, 350 kilowatts more to be implemented with that rate that we have to go uh, by 2030. So that means the seven years, if you just divide by seven, numbers are still very strong. There are a lot of challenges today. So if you come back to uh, basic problems, if you speak on say specific to Maharashtra, today if you see the numbers that I have with me on my page, the open access charges and the savings that you know, whatever, Maharashtra is leading the table in the, across all the states in terms of very, very heavy charges on the OA charges, the transmission charges, giving charges, and the distribution loss charges, etc. It accumulates to the consumer by the end, you know. The charges uh, which uh, government is bearing is, if I tell you the numbers today, uh, the gross of free charge is one of the highest in Maharashtra. That is one of the reasons I like to put forth to the gentleman here. Maybe the government can rethink on those lines. And uh, if you talk of IPPs putting up projects in Maharashtra, that puts a stacking figure behind. You know, why people are now threatening to go to Gujarat or maybe to Andhra or maybe to other states? Is because you know ultimately the consumer who has to buy the power. It is coming still very high for him. If it is in Maharashtra, because of these leading charges, which are still not being you know solved by the government of Maharashtra till now. This one thing on that probably you no know, one has to pay attention to. Second problem which comes is uh, in the land. Land acquisition. Today, if I talk of say, if I go for manufacturing of solar modules, uh, if you go to other states, I should not really be comparing, but uh, the figures are there. If you go to say Telangana, or maybe to Andhra, or maybe now to UP, probably. Uh, huge encouragement has come by the state government in its allocation of land for the manufacturing base to be set up. They are giving huge incentives, like in Telangana, government is giving very highly subsidized land to the manufacturers who want to really set up their own uh, body manufacturing in their areas. There is some policy yet to come from Maharashtra. If something has come up, I'll certainly be, if you are not aware, I'll like to know about it. But these are the challenges which are really on the ground today, we all face. <coughs> now, uh, development uh, in the technological side, if we talk about in solar, uh, it has come um, substantial on the substantial grounds. But uh, other countries are also progressing. We have to also bear up in terms of our uh, increasing the capacity utilization factors for the panels. Which is still, if you talk of bifacial model on the mono, still we are not crossing 21.5 persons here, which other countries and other people have come up from. To say 26 persons, we have to think, we have to think of highly practical areas. Which we are uh, you know, trying to, as a company today, where I am, I'm trying to have a joint venture or maybe the sort of with maybe uh, uh, foreign uh, technocrats today to give us some technological uh, advancements towards what we are taking care of. So these are some of the areas which are worth pondering, according to me. And uh, coming back to say EPC, EPC contractors like us. Like we are using contractors here at IQB developers outside India. Why? Right? Because we don't get the tariff here in India. That we so want. So, as far as EPC is concerned, timelines are very strict, strict, put to the government, but the support, it can be well executed. But the support which has to come in, say, one by proper allocation, although they say when the land is allocated, but when you go on the ground, huge problems come. There are some problems with the land still. You are not able to work freely. There are a lot of issues in terms of evacuation of power. When you go for the transmission line, there are problems with it related to RO lighting still on the ground. So these are the areas uh, maybe you know uh, we have to come up and which we as a country are trying and we are sure that we will come up with and I think today now we are doing interest also. So if we have known the problem, the solution will be there. So this is a brief I'd like to tell. Now as the as the number is concerned. Uh, till now, from say 2020, 2010 to 2022, uh, we have uh, issued the tenders, if you like to know the figures, of 161 gigawatts. Within, but the allocated capacity is only 114 gigawatts till now. Why it has happened? Why the people are stalled? There is a big shortfall, say about 50 gigawatts of allocation still. 
So these are the content, uh, these are the sub figures which, which you stacking around, and other parts which I have highlighted, maybe one content. So this is my submission. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Tengra. Uh, that was uh, uh, really uh, for the awareness of the people who are here uh, on the challenges we have faced. Yes. Uh, most of the challenges are known. On the cross subsidy, I would just like to comment on. Uh, like uh, we must be thankful to MERC because MSDC and new tariff petition they have asked for more than 4 rupees cross subsidy. And uh, MERC is uh, kind enough to continue at the same cross subsidy level. So we should have uh, profit in loss, you can say. But as far as the developers and open access people are concerned, so we have to find out something positive out of it. Uh, on other side, on uh, cross uh, cross subsidy, uh, so I would like to uh, inform the audience here. I am also a chairman of the uh, LG Community of Parada Chamber. So I have submitted to MERC about the cross subsidy and the way forward. Because it is also mentioned in RDS scheme that uh, uh, the uh, AC, uh, average cost of supply and ARR, ACOS and ARR gap to be made uh, to zero by 24 25. I think uh, they are mentioning to reduce the cross subsidy to zero. To MERC, they have mentioned in the uh, tariff order. That we are looking for the formation of a new company in parallel to MSCDCL only for agricultural distribution. So that this uh, subsidizing and uh, free power to farmers should not affect the CM9 control of the normal as far as tariff is concerned. Because the gap is too high from average cost of supply to the consumer tariff, the uh, subsidization is very, very high. And if we have that other company parallel to MSCDCL only for Sector distribution and if, even if the state government wants to have uh, free power to uh, subsidize power to power, they can have a direct cost of uh, back transfer like gas subsidy. And uh, this is a way forward, which has also mentioned by uh, energy minister at the central level. And that's the way forward to have DVD for the subsidy and separate company for uh, agriculture distribution so that the main CNI consumer and uh, other consumers. The public utility and other things will not be affected. So that's a move. Maybe we have to wait for that thing to happen. Uh, let us move on to uh, Sprung Energy, Mr. Sumi. <coughs> on utility scale uh, projects, the challenges like grid curtailment, PPA renegotiation, delay in payments, progress of uh, state and central, the solar grids, status of solar park and evacuation challenges. You can just uh, direct a few of the challenges on this. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Prashanti, for this question. Uh, this is Sumit Jalil from Spring Energy. Uh, primarily, we are a utility scale company. And uh, the question is, I can put on here that uh, what is the status about all the bids which are happening? So, if we see across the country, majority of the bid or the volume in terms of gigawatt, which comes from the central bids. Central bids are leading overall, which is majorly being taken care by CT, NDPC, NHPC to some extent, and basically uh, government uh, central PSUs. Now, uh, the only sad part about that is that they themselves don't procure, uh, they don't themselves don't consume the power. Finally, they come back to the state discounts like MSCDC, maybe other states like UP, such as Bihar, or whatever states across the country, and then the power is back to back sold to them. So, in the process, this, uh, as rightly pointed out by Sir, that there is 161 kilowatts saying Zoom, bonus, but only 140 kilowatts is moving Zoom, ahead. Bonus, and this is one of the primary reasons that back to back. CT or NTPC or these agencies are not able to arrange the final procure or the discount on board which will procure this power. The primary reason for that uh, maybe uh, is the cost of power is such that discounts people to do their own tenders, but they don't get the power that type of response. Uh, recently, there is a uh, government of India news that CT. Now this rating is very much important which primarily shows the interest of international investors into India and this is the primary reason that some of the developers uh, show away some of the discounts 
which could pay for six months, twelve months. So, for example, there are projects or there are discounts in the country, like there are, uh, I should name them actually, but there are two states which don't pay for twelve months, eighteen months put together, and that affects the project cash flow, and that's why those states are not considered as investment friendly or who they are. But back to back savings is also not able to do the tie ups. And that is why this is the gap between the bids which come and finally the, the projects which are executed on ground. In terms of Maharashtra, Maharashtra has MSC itself has back to back come up with the bids. And, and we are grateful that they come up with all types of bids solar, wind, hybrid, and in fact, one of them is storage also. The only issue is again the tariffs which MSCDC expects and the landed tariff which we consider as a developer when we derive it through the reverse option, considering all the costs put together and risk with respect to land and redevelopation, especially in the state, then the bids don't sell through. So again, bidding happens, but finally, the, the power purchase agreement or the project on ground doesn't move at that pace. Uh, of lately, even the ISP estate was not so great in the state, but now that is also has developed. So now we can see that there are almost three or type of projects in pipeline in terms of wind and solar put together. Over and over that, also right now we just see solar as a power or solar as a high power, but now as the time has changed, technologies are changing. Even the CLI side, people don't want only really solar, they want RTC type of power, that is not the top type of power. The input plays the major role in that. Uh, uh, storage technologies lead this, this side of the technology because what is happening that even MSCC is why and or any state is called is why because I is an intermittent power. At the end of the day, they, they, they have to keep on taking thermal power. They have to keep on procurement of power. Plus, they have to purchase RE power as well. So, everything can't be accommodated because supply and demand have, can't be matched in terms of requirement of the state. Maybe at few hours when the power is required, at night. At night, there is no solar available. So, there are only two options, either support it with the help of wind or support it with the help of storage possibilities. So, these are the new technologies which are to be embraced as the economies of scale will improve, the cost of power will come down and these challenges overall will help to reduce the cost of power which is the final aim of any discount so that the consumer is not affected, which, are, which we are finally the end so, these are overall perspective of all the challenges put together on ground, already covered that land acquisition issues, solar power, government plant and also evacuation availability. Actually, Maharashtra is one of those states which is having very good SQL network. But unfortunately, when we move back and see the network, we are not able to understand where to go back and connect to which, which substation. That, that still is not very much clear where some of the grid connected applications may be in process or process which they are not able to develop ahead and then serious is stay away and this overall affects the state's development. So this were a few points from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Sudhu. Uh, your question about RTC, I think uh, you have developed uh, all the views for RTC with more to DP Chemotech. To understand uh, the experience about RTC, you can uh, throw some light on that. 